Hello everyone, this is Sci Soldier here, continuing with our Let's Play Dominions 4, Nazca Rise of the Mummies. It is now late spring in year 9 of the Ascension Wars. You can see here that we have completed research in Thaumaturgy. We are now level 8, and we are pretty close to maxing that one out as well. Um, I'm actually probably going to switch over to researching blood magic here. Uh, another possibility would be uh, construction magic for juggernauts and mechanical militia. Juggernauts would actually be quite good because that would uh, allow me to summon these juggernauts that actually increase my dominion, kind of like a temple or a prophet, which, uh, considering that I am trying to push my dominion, that would actually be quite nice. I do have a few guys that would be able to cast that spell. Um, could actually be more useful to us to go for that before blood magic. However, I do believe our pretender is going to be ready to cast some uh, decent uh, spells in blood magic fairly shortly here. You can see he is already up to level 4 in blood magic. Um, he's already maxed out in astral. Can't really do any more of that. Now then, if I was to switch over to the boots that give me an earth boost, and say the Atlas of Creation, I could actually forge the Gate Stone right now. Which I'm considering doing. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. If I was to give him the Atlas of Creation and the Boots of Antius. That bumps him up to a nice 7 in Earth Magic. And I would easily... Hey, look, the summit is back. Interesting. But more than that... Holy crap, that actually takes 8 in Earth Magic. I was wrong. Hmm. What's the manual of crossbreeding? Ah. Uh. Ooh, that's an interesting looking one. The helmet of perfection. <gasps> oh, now I'm wishing I hadn't, uh. Actually. Put that mummy helm on me. This thing gives all plus five. Holy crap. This helmet is perfect. The man whose leader wears this helmet is very unlikely to break, and an enemy who tries to strike against the helmet will be struck by awe, or have one of his eyes put out for... Oh, it actually puts out your eyes, too. I want it! I want it so bad! It requires air and water. Well, you know what? I might actually have somebody else that can uh, forge that thing. What about this guy up here? If uh, if I had any water booster, he could forge it. Now then, what about the anvil and the hammer of the forge lord? Would that actually allow him to forge that thing? It might. I'm going to give him the anvil and the hammer of the forge lord. Let's just see if he can forge that thing. Oh, yes, we can. That is going to go to our uh, prophet. No doubt about it. We're going to give him such high levels of awe, it's going to be ridiculous. 
He's already got like 11 awe. We're going to bump that up to about 14 or something. Yes, indeed. Now then, what boots do I actually want to give to him? Hmm. We could do boots of quickness, but, uh... Or winged shoes, that would not necessarily, uh... Ah. Tell you what we're actually going to do here, I think. Actually, let's first of all take a look and see if he can cast any decent spells. Nothing I'm particularly excited about. What I'm going to do here is empower him, I think, in astral magic. And, of course, we have to have our pretender wish for magic power once again. All right. So, taking a look here. We have our new Ether Lord. He has magic power one. This unit is more powerful in provinces with high magic and less powerful in provinces with drain. So he comes with uh, Astral three, Death two, and Blood one. I'm just curious to see he cannot actually summon any additional allies. I was hoping that he might would be able to do that. Let me go ahead and give him his little magic troops. These guys are kind of cool. They're not exactly amazing. Let's give him some chainmail displacement. I think an eye shield. The moon lance isn't that bad. Give him an amulet of uh, anti magic. Just trying to decide here. Actually, I think I've got my earth troll up there that needs to be given a weapon. Where is he? Is our Earth Troll here? Okay, I did already give him a weapon. I guess I forgot. Let's see if we have anyone here that needs to reanimate. He does. He does. Him as well. And this guy. All right. Let's go ahead and set these guys to start reanimating. And we have our massive army here. We're going to go ahead and have them storm the castle. Anyways, let's go ahead and finish reading these messages. Battle in good water. Apparently we took that over without suffering any losses. Battle in black water. A Wraith Lord's taken over another province. And, of course, we have the Battle in Mictolin. Well, that's actually not the one I was looking at. I guess they summon their god again. Who's promptly killed. Yes, their god is already dead. Alright, now this is the one I was looking for. The Battle at the Fortress of Urfablia. Let's just go ahead and watch this one and see how it goes. Hopefully our King of Banefires isn't close enough to actually harm this guy.
speed things up here because this could take a while. All these guys casting all their little buffs. Plenty of wolves that are about to charge in here, though. And the wolves will not be banished. So, uh, they're not going to be able to stop those wolves with banishments. Storm of Thorns is another story, though. What are... Why are these idiots on the front lines here? They're about to burn to death for anthrax. Okay, so they're... Hopefully they continue to move forward and... Don't just stop right next to him. Alright, we've already got a bunch of wolves engaging the enemy commanders. So that's good. Should start chewing them to pieces. Alright. Indeed, our wolves are... Starting to kill them. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of spells being cast here. Antrax just cast Soul Vortex. Which uh, I don't think he's ever going to have a chance to use. I think it's going to be over before he ever gets there. The only thing he might actually accomplish in this battle is to kill a couple of my Mound Kings. Let's see if these guys are actually starting to burn. Yes, they are. He seems to be out of range, though, so that's good. Micklin is making a pretty good little last stand. But, uh... Yep, it's pretty much over for them already. So our Mount King is actually caught on fire now. So yeah, our, our King of Banefires is managing to kill a couple of our Mount Kings. Probably shouldn't have actually sent him into the battle. But it looks like they are starting to run. At least the smarter ones are. Not that they have anywhere to go. They're just going to run and they're going to die. Because they have no province to retreat to. Alright, so one of our Mount Kings is dead and this one's about to die too. Boom, there he goes. Alright, so they got like one sorceress left here. Come on now. 
Kill this winch. There we are. That is the end of Michelin, I do believe. Quit the battle. Alright, a message from Michelin. You have killed our god, really? Well, it looks to me like you've been vanquished permanently. Alright, so that is the death of Michelin right there. We had a couple more unexpected events. We found some air gems. The entrance to the fortification in this province has been breached. We're going to go ahead and put some province defense here. And we will continue to move that force. And send those guys there. Give him all these alone dead. Ah, for crying out loud. I don't know why they can't go in the same column with the uh, Sapayas, but apparently it doesn't like that. We'll move our uh, Domex here. Give this guy some units and move him. And do the same here. And we'll move these guys. And him as well. I could just teleport him, but, uh, I'll just move him and move these guys on down there as well. So, Michelin is officially vanquished. And I believe we're pretty much ready to start working on the uh, underwater nations here. All of our werewolves, we are going to move them down here to the border with man. And I have this guy here casting the soul stone. I don't think that I can do it at a range. Oh, yes, I can. So we'll start casting that there. Move these guys on up. And him as well. These werewolves here can start moving down towards man. And him as well. So these guys can start reanimating. And I have all of these guys moving there by the shore. Yes, indeed. Either man is trying to move these guys here to defend against me, or he's trying to shuffle them down there with the border of Ulm. Which of those two, I'm not entirely sure. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm actually going to go for blood magic there. And I could use a another good helmet for him. I'll give him a horror helmet. I think I'll give him these uh, boots of quickness. I'll give him a amulet of resilience. I suppose I'll give him a sword of swiftness 
And what else would be good for him? I believe he's probably already got dark vision. Well, it doesn't say that he does. But that would give him fear. I don't really care about increasing his death ritual range, though. It might be more useful to hang on to that for uh, someone else. So we're going to go ahead and... I'll start moving him up here, and I'll have someone else forge that, uh... Let these guys cast Hardrun Gate. And I'm actually thinking I may go ahead and... Where did he go? Okay, so he's not immune to poison, so... Putting the Tarsks with him might not be the best idea. Uh, I've still got several guys with afflictions that need to be healed. So I'll keep them there while their afflictions are being healed. I'll just go ahead and move him on up. This guy here. Let's go ahead and alchemize some uh, more gems. We're actually going through our astral gems quite quickly. I'm going to go ahead and summon another Wraith Lord. We should have a fair number of ghosts mixed in here too. Ghost from Nazca. These guys are the ones that are being summoned by our Wraith Lords. Alright, and how about our temples? Let's construct a temple there. And... May as well go ahead and move him. All right, he can construct a temple. You can see that all of Mictlan's, uh dominion has vanished, which means there's a big vacuum here that's about to be taken over by my own dominion. Alright. We've got like 3,500 something long dead right there at the moment. I'm actually considering foregoing summoning the Wraith Lord and summoning a whole bunch of Mound Kings here. To lead some of these long dead. Because I don't have enough to lead all of them. If we did that, we could give a, uh, a lot of trouble to both Pelagia and Man. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and end our turn here. So as always, if you enjoy our videos, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And we will see you again soon. Thank you very much. Yeah.